Hello, Thornton Darts here, back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Ryan Searle, heavy metal. I'm actually wearing uh, his shirt right here. Um, and we're just going to go from sort of some of the early work we did on Ryan's darts, a couple of interesting points, all the way down to the final product, which you can see on the screen now. So if it is something that interests you, they are available on loxydarts.com. And in all honesty, if you've seen the video before about Matt Edgar, I'll put a little suggested link come up the top. Uh, Matt had a lot of iterations, um, you know, a few prototypes. Ryan's wasn't that complex. Um, I'll, I'll give you a bit more detail in the video. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. And the first thing I did was understand what Ryan was currently throwing. I've never thrown 32 gram bomber darts before. So my first priority was to, to get a hold of the sets that Ryan was throwing and what he used to throw, get a feel for them and try and understand what goes into them. So... That's what I did. Luckily, one of my friends had the original uh, Ryan Searle ones, uh, his first darts that he had made. And then uh, Ryan actually sent back some darts for me on the left. Um, Matt Edgar brought them back and uh, I managed to have a look at those. Uh, for me, I wanted to understand the differences um, because obviously he had new darts. The ones on the left are his newest set. And he obviously won his prototype with the ones on the right. So for me, I wanted to understand what the main differences were and what Ryan preferred out of those two, because I was quite interested in the uh, the first set, to be fair. Now, you might be thinking, Zach, you're crazy. The darts look absolutely identical. Well, I thought similar when I first saw them, but when you look close up to the grip, uh, there are some subtle changes. So if you see on this image here, uh, on the original Ryan Searle darts, he actually had this ring grip in there. So it was, you know, big, evenly spaced um, ring grips. And in between those two uh, grooves, there was a smaller one. Okay, so that was the Ryan Cell 1s. And now if we look at Ryan Cell 2s, it was actually different. Now, there was rectangular cuts. So that's a different feel of the dart. For me, the way I compare it is if you've ever thrown Daryl Gurney's actual darts and then the Argos version, uh, the Argos version have got the round radial cuts and the other version has the sort of rectangular cuts, his actual set, and the grip feels different on the two. For me, the rectangular grip is grippier. So that was important for me to understand and learn which Ryan preferred. Okay, so that's what happened there. And the other thing was the cuts along the back. Right, so let's take a look at these longitudinal cuts and I'm going to talk to you about why they're different. They do look quite similar, but they were made using different processes, which was important for me to learn as a designer and then learn which one Ryan preferred. So on the left hand side, the darts, um, the factory that made this actually had different tooling. So if you imagine this, is, my hand is the dart. There's actually a, a disc, a spinning disc cutter that comes down goes into a certain depth and then just slides the whole way along and then comes off. So when the nose finishes, it just comes off straight and that finishes the end of the cut. Now, if you imagine that disc, it's going to create a bit more of a triangular shape because at the end of the blade where they're sharpened, it's a bit of a, like a, a triangular shape. And that's what it is on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, it's made by what's known as a, a ball nose cutter. So um, basically you've got, again, if this is the dart, it's sort of like a, a spinning drill bit. It comes down, drills in a certain depth, and then it's just moved along. So rather than being designed to cut down, it's designed to cut along, usually on a milling machine, it, or some machines have the capability to do both. So, and they obviously feel different. One's more rounded, less aggressive, and the other is just feels a little bit sharper. So for me, that was important just to gauge the differences between the two. Okay, so another fundamental difference between the two when designing was actually how the darts sat in the board and the sort of balance of them. Now, uh, the darts are quite grippy and they've got a lot of these cuts going along the dart. Now, if we compare this to the circular version, the, this style of cut actually cuts away more material. So if you had two of the exact same darts, but the grips were cut square and circular, you'd find that the square cut darts would weigh less because there's more material that's gone. 
So when I actually threw these darts, they actually landed in the dart uh, in the board slightly differently. So uh, as a designer, I like to understand the, the processes. That's why I learned about how they were made. And then also what I did was I learned about the dart themselves. For me, I'd never thrown a 32 gram front loaded barrel. So what I did was I threw the barrels, tried to understand them a bit more because then if I understood what I was designing um, for Ryan, I could then hopefully understand it from Ryan's point of view. Whereas if I hadn't thrown these, I probably wouldn't have understood the appeal and what Ryan liked about them. So I tested them out. And for me, I found that one of the versions of the darts consistently sat a little bit more upright. So that was then a conversation that we had with Ryan to say, look, um, with your old darts, they sat up a little bit more. Your newer darts sit a bit flatter. What do you prefer? And all honesty, he, he didn't particularly mind. He, he said he felt great with both. So it was then up to us to get him something to try and then something he's familiar with. But then I looked at some other games. So let's take a look at when he played Van Gogh and he won his Players' Championship 3. And his darts, when they go in the board, I feel like they're a little bit upright. The camera's down looking up. So when you get closer, they're sitting relatively upright. Then if we go to this game with Gerwin Price. For me, apart from that second dart that took a bit of a deflection, like I saw, they're sitting a little bit flatter. Obviously, you hit a 180 compared to the 140, but it's just different snippets of the game. But I feel like with that size dart, it's quite important to clash in. So I thought that the dart sitting more upright would give a bit of an advantage. So that's something I put forward to the team and it's something that we considered in the design. Okay, so the next thing to do was to create some actual designs in CAD. Now I understood a bit about the darts. Um, spoken to Ryan a bit, I decided to come up with a few a few bits. Now, because it's such a unique dart and Ryan's used to it, I didn't want to stray too far away from what he was used to. It's different with a straight barrel. You can, you know, adjust certain things. But I think Ryan's style was very unique. I wanted to keep it fairly similar so he didn't feel like it was a brand new dart, but also, you know, bring something a little different. Um, for the cell fans. So I came up with a few different ideas and presented them to the guys. So this was based on the more of a square cut, but obviously we had some of these circular cuts in between. And I kept the rear to be the square cut. There's a slightly different nose. And I colored it in what I thought was heavy metal colored. So I went with sort of red for, for blood. <laughs> And then black for, you know, the dark heavy metal colors, really. Uh, and then I did the same, but with all rounded. And as you can see, the longitudinal cuts are both sort of circular. You know, they're those ball nose cutters. And I played around with the dimensions of those. Uh, they're actually smaller there. And these were the first ideas I presented. And another thing which maybe might interest you guys you won't have seen before, is this version. Now, I came up with this dark version, initially heavy metal, I thought black. Why not just make them black? But obviously, there's different costs. Um, it, it feels slightly different. So this was something I presented. If it's something you guys think, wow, these are cool, uh, let the Loxley guys know. Maybe they'll release a um, special edition. So that's something to consider for you guys that you may not have seen already. So yeah, they were my first initial ideas. And then I'll show you where we got to. So then what happened was from those two designs, two different prototypes were made. And we got Ryan testing the two. Uh, he practiced with them at home. And to be honest, Ryan's quite laid back. And he, he didn't really mind which one went forward. But ultimately, you know, we had to take one forward. And we picked the version similar to his uh, version ones. There's a few subtle differences like the nose, uh, a tiny grip change, obviously the colors and the logos as well. But you know, if it works, why change it too much? And that was the approach that we went with. So putting the player first, keeping them comfortable. Uh, obviously we gave them testing time and that's what we've come with. These are the full production darts and they are really nice. So like I said, they are available on the website. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in a set. But that's just a bit of a, an insight how me and the team at Loxley 
came up with this for Ryan. You know, there was a couple of different iterations. We wanted to get it right. And this is what we came up with with Ryan. So there you have it, guys. If you've got any other burning questions uh, or any other things, do let me know in the comments. Again, I will put the link in the description if you want to check out where you can purchase a set of these. But as normal, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon. Ciao.